For this experiment, the following materials are needed. Test tubes, droppers, graduated cylinder, and the following are the main reagents. Fellings A and B, Benedict's reagent, Selwanoff's reagent, Mollish reagent, Barfoid's reagent, and iodine solution. The carbohydrate solutions are glucose, fructose, lactose, sucrose, and starch. We also need test tube racks, marker, and paper tape for labeling. And before anything else, make sure that you also have your paper and pen with you so that you can easily take note of the observations that you will be making while watching the experiment. And now that everything is ready, let us now start. For the first part of the experiment, we will be doing Mollish test, which is a general test for carbohydrates. Concentrated sulfuric acid will also be used in this test. Make sure that you also label your test tubes so that you won't get confused when transferring the carbohydrate samples. First, we need about 2 ml of each carbohydrate solution in our four test tubes. And then, we will be adding 10 drops of Mollish reagent to each carbohydrate sample and then mix thoroughly. And then, carefully add about 15 to 20 drops of concentrated sulfuric acid and allow it to flow down the side of the tube. Do not steer. The sulfuric acid will form a bottom layer and then note the color formed at the zone in between the two liquids. And here are the results after the addition of concentrated sulfuric acid. Here are the close-up videos for each of the tubes. Our next test is Benedict's test, a test for reducing sugars. To do this, about 2 ml of Benedict's solution is added to 4 empty tubes and then placed into a water bath for 30 seconds. If the solution remains clear blue, we can continue with the test, which means the reagent is not contaminated. Allow the four test tubes to cool down until they are just warm to touch, and then add five drops of the carbohydrate solutions. After that, place the four test tubes containing Benedict solution and carbohydrate samples into a boiling water bath for two minutes. Cool and observe what happens. Always remember to take note of your observations by writing it down so you won't have to rewatch this experiment when answering your laboratory worksheets. Here are the samples just after taking it out from the boiling water bath. We have allowed it to cool down for a few minutes, and here are the results. Our next test is Felling's test, which is a reduction test to determine the presence of reducing sugars. 
It differs from Benedict's test in that Felling's reagent contains Rochelle's salt or sodium potassium tartrate in place of sodium citrate. Felling's solution consists of solution A and solution B. So for the procedures, in each of the test tubes, we are going to mix 1 ml of felling solution A and 1 ml of felling solution B and add 3 ml of water. After that, the four test tubes are placed in a boiling water bath for one minute. If the solution remains blue or clear blue, we are going to add eight drops of each of the sugar solution to each of the test tubes. And then boil again the four test tubes with the sugar solution for another two minutes and note the changes in the solution. And these are the results after 2 minutes in the boiling water bath. Here are the close-up results. Our next test is Barfoid's test, which distinguishes reducing monosaccharides from reducing disaccharides by controlling pH and time of heating. This is also a copper reduction test in acidic conditions. For the procedures, in each of the four test tubes, we are going to add 2 ml of Barfoid's reagent. And then, to each of the test tubes, we are going to add 10 drops of each of our sugar solution. And then, place the test tubes in boiling water bath for 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, we are removing the test tubes from our boiling water bath and let it cool. Observe the first 15 minutes. Record your observations. Our last test is Seloanov's test. This test distinguishes between fructose and glucose. Overheating of the solution should be avoided because on continuous boiling, Aldo's test will also give a positive result. To do this test, we're going to add 2 ml of the sugar solutions to 3 ml of Seloanov's reagent. After that, immerse the solutions in boiling water bath. Observe the color changes during the first 10 minutes of boiling.
And here are the results after taking out the test tubes in the boiling water bath. And now we will be proceeding with the iodine test for starch. For this test, we are going to place 2 ml of the plant starch solution and then add a drop of iodine solution. And then heat the solution and note the change. After heating the solution and cooling it down, here is the final result for the iodine test. And that's it. See you in our next experiment.